Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Nadie and today we'll be doing a first impression of the Jacqueline Cosmetics Rouge Romance Blush Palettes. As you beautiful people know, this is about the products, not the people behind them. Any tiff you may have with them, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. Oh my little blushing boobies, how you doing today? I hope wherever you're at in the world, you are having a spectacular day so far. I myself am doing wonderful. It has been a hella busy day for me. I have a tea party that I'm throwing tomorrow. My best Judy is getting married and we're dress shopping tomorrow. Then we're coming back for like a little party and some sun, maybe a few mimosas, maybe some Mary Jane. Either way, it's gonna be fun. And now it is very, very late in the evening. Like normally around now, I'd be chilling, getting ready for bed, trying to wind down. But I really wanted to film and I saw these in my to film pile. Not gonna lie, I totally freaking forgot about these. Otherwise I would have reviewed them earlier. So this is definitely impromptu and it's gonna be very relaxed. I don't even know if I'm gonna end up doing a look. I mean, maybe I will. Oh my God, there's a lot of blushes in here. I thought there were only four shades in here, but I guess there's six in each. I ended up getting both palettes. I'm not sure if I'll end up keeping both of them. Definitely make sure to check out my Poshmark because usually the swatch items that I don't keep, I list on there. Ron, what do you think? Come here, say hi to the lovely people. Fine, I'll come get you. Oh, let's see. This time Ron is upset with me because he just got a bath. I'm sorry for keeping you soft and clean, my love. Oh, what a handsome little beast. Oh, Ron, you're just the perfect entity. I can't kiss you because I have lip gloss on. Say hello to the marvelous viewers, Ron. Would not give fewer shits, but... Damn, you smell good. Okay, go back to snoozing, baby. Thank you for your presents. Oh, so much hair. All right, it looks like each of these retail for $45. Oh my God, there's hair on my lips. Okay, each of these are $45, so together they're $90. I don't know what the quality of this is, but I don't know that this is worth $90, although you do get 12 different shades. And since the infamous lipstick fiasco, pretty much everything that this brand has launched is decent quality. So maybe it is worth it, you never know. I just know that I have an ass ton of blushes ranging from really inexpensive like drugstore style to super expensive designer style. And honestly, except for like the packaging and the imprint in the blush, I would never be able to tell which one's more expensive. Like if it's a really good foundation and just makes my skin look good, I'm okay paying a heavy price. But blush to me just shouldn't have like a super high price tag. Not that this is super expensive. To me, like $45 is probably the most that I would spend on a blush palette. Nothing against this brand or any brand. I'm just a fucking cheap ass. Once again, the Jacqueline Cosmetics website doesn't really want to work for my computer. It puts a picture right in the middle of the description so I can't really read it. So give me one second to copy and paste this jizzy jazz. Wait, did they come out with blush sticks for this launch too? Shit, I may have missed that. Although I will tell you, I'm not a huge cream blush fan, so I probably wouldn't have liked them. Although their other products really have surprised me, so maybe I would have liked it. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below if that's something you'd like me to review because I can order some. All right, their website says, with an angled fluffy brush, sweep onto the outer cheekbones and blend into the temples for a lifting effect for a flirty youthful flop. Oh, I thought this said floppy, but I'm combining flush and and apply. For a flirty, youthful flush, apply to apples of the cheeks and blend lightly to the bridge of the nose. I do not want anything to look floppier than it already is, damn it. They say a little bit definitely goes a long way with these blushes. They are beautifully pigmented. I barely tap the brush into the pan, gently swoop it along my cheeks. It's so buildable, so start with a tiny bit because we all overdo it sometimes. If you do, don't freak out. Just take a damp beauty sponge and lightly dab any area that has too much blush. I didn't know that. That's a really cool tip. And <laughs> just the tip. So let's open these little bad bitches up, starting with... I don't know which one this is. Um, I don't know. It's the one with... Oh, wait, is this... Is this collection not called Rouge Romance or is this the bougie something? My goodness, it has been way too long since I've ordered this. No, I don't know. One is called Rouge Romance and one is Rouge Affair. Let's hop into the Rouge Romance one. The packaging is very pretty. It's very fairy tale esque and kind of whimsical. Oh my goodness, I would love this wallpapered in my bathroom. So here we have the packaging. It has raised little letters so you can easily see it. Ooh, and it feels really nice. And then let's open her up and oh, very pretty. The only thing that I don't exactly love is that some of these shadows do look very, very similar. These aren't shadows. These are blushes. Oh my gosh. I don't know how they're registering on camera, but in person, this and this look very, very similar. And then these two also look very similar. I mean, they are a little bit different in undertone and probably what you're seeing is way different than what I'm seeing. But I guess now that I'm looking at the pictures of it online, this is pretty much how it looks in the picture. So if you ordered this, you probably already knew beforehand that they do look a little bit similar. Not a biggie. Sometimes you need a blush to be a little bit lighter in shade. 
Kool-Aid, and that's okay. So now we're gonna do the Rouge Affair. Come on, you little bastard. Meh. And here we go. Ooh, very, very pretty, but once again, they are very similar. Although I guess with this palette, the range is a little bit more expanded, but really not that much. That's one of the really difficult things about making blush palettes. You really can't satisfy everyone with the shade range. But I guess I do wish some of the shades were a little bit different, but together, these are quite pretty. I do like these. I could see a lot of skin tones using them. I could see this used on deeper skin tones, lighter skin tones. This one definitely is a bit cooler than anything that I'd normally grab, but my eye does instantly catch this one, so maybe I'll use that. I don't know. I'm never positive which blush I should use. Sometimes I look like I have jaundice or like an orange streak down my face, and other times I just look like I got punched, so usually I'll match it up with my lipstick or try to match it to a shade in my eyeshadow. And I also used to kind of hate the shit out of blushes. Like, it was always useless for me, but it can totally transform a look. It can add warmth. It can add a cool look. You can sculpt your face with it. Blush is totally a necessity for me now. Like, even on days when I don't go full glam and wear a bunch of makeup, I still wear blush. So, my sweet, lovely friends, let's just go ahead and dive right into this and do the swatchy song. Y'all know it. Are you ready? Swatch and ta ha 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 Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna do live swatches of this because why the fuck not? And the description was absolutely correct. These are very, very pigmented. So let's go ahead and place that there. And here we go. Yes, they are indeed quite pigmented. They're not the most pigmented blushes that I've ever worked with, but I kind of like that they're not too saturated. Some blushes can really fuck me up. Like I'll put on the tiniest amount and it'll still be too much. But these do appear to be user friendly and they aren't so filled with filler that they're just kind of like ashy and dusty looking. They look very pretty. Nothing really seems to be splotchy. They almost perform a little bit like a very light eyeshadow, and I really like all of these colors. So, let's swatch the other palette on the other hand. I think this one is definitely what I'd gravitate more towards, even though the other one would probably fit my skin tone a little bit better. If I had to make a comparison, I would say maybe they're similar to, like, the Juvia's Place blushes, although I don't think these are quite as pigmented as those blushes, which isn't a bad thing because you aren't gonna overdo it with these. I love Love the Juvia's Place blushes, but sometimes I dip in once and it's still too much. Actually, not to be a shady bitch or anything, just because a lot of people always ask for comparisons, here is a Juvia's blush palette. And let me just feel a couple of these. All right, so here are these. Yes, those are way more pigmented. In fact, the colors are actually really similar too. Like this salmon is very, very close to this one. Actually, no, I take that back. This one looks way orangier, way more vibrant. Yet on the hand, I don't know that I'd be able to tell them apart. This video isn't about Jubia's Place. This is about Jacqueline, but if you do want me to do a dupe them on this, let me know. I don't ever want to take money away from artists, but I also know that not everyone can afford a $45 blush palette. You might like a color in the palette, but until you can afford that palette, you want an alternative, so let me know, because I'll totally do that. Okay, so as a little bit of a base so that you can actually see the blush on my face, I'm gonna take this ColourPop Medium 85C stick. I'm not gonna put a ton on, I just want a clean canvas so you can see. Oh my goodness, that's actually really pretty. Why don't I use that more often? Probably because normally Normally, it's too fucking deep for me. Ooh, we're too high. Ready? Uh, never have I ever said I'm too high. Okay, so my angled brush is shedding like a fucker, so I'm just gonna go in with my normal blush brush, and then I'll clean it in between little applications. Actually, let's just do both sides, and I can do two at a time. Work smarter, not harder. Damn, that foundation is beautimous, which makes sense. I adore the other ColourPop foundations. Also, did anybody think of Bad Romance when they saw this? Total Gaga moment. Okay, so let's lightly dip into Boudoir. Ooh, she got a little bit of kickback, but it's really not that bad. I think it's from my swatching. And a good bit does go onto the brush. I'm gonna kind of tap that off. And here we go. Ready? Mm, right about there. <gasps> Ooh, that is quite pretty. I like how it's super subtle. I'm not surprised it is because I did tap off quite a bit, but even with the amount that I tapped off, there is a good bit showing up. I don't know if anybody else does this, but to apply blush, I always tap it on like I'm beating my face with a peony, but it just helps the blush be so soft and subtle. Okay, so there is one layer. I'm gonna take a tiny bit more just so we can see how built up it can be. There's a fucking bug flying around. Get away! This is my moment, damn it. Okay, so there is that side. That is actually very, very pretty. Just like the powders that they came out with, it does kind of sink right into the skin. It doesn't really look like I'm wearing makeup. It just looks pretty. Maybe this palette is worth it. Fuck. Okay, then with the other side of the brush, I'm just gonna go in with Tea Room. <gasps> oh, that's a really pretty color too. Oh, y'all, I might actually keep 
these. Or at least this one, although I don't really need any more blushes. Fuck. I'm such a makeup whore. Okay, so there is this side. This one is definitely more of like the sunburn effect, which I guess is a popular thing now. To each their own. But here we have both sides. I really like this. It just looks airbrushed. It might also be the foundation because I'm falling in love with it again. But they seem to complement each other really, really well. I always like to see when more kind of expensive products can pair well with kind of cheap products. Like a clash of the worlds and I'm living for it. Okay, so let's clean our brush and then I'm gonna wipe this off and start again. Next, we'll dip into this deeper kind of mauve -ish shade. It's not really a mauve. What is that? Like a darkish dusty rose? We'll go with that. Let's tap this on the face like a headboard on Motel 8. That too is really, really pretty. I don't know that I love that color on me. It's not like it wouldn't work. Actually, I do really like that color on me. What the fuck am I talking about? All of these colors I'm probably gonna adore. Then on the other side, we'll take some fancy pants. I am kind of noticing that some of these are a little bit different with the pigmentation, like tempting. I had to dip in like four times just to get this. I did tap my brush off in between each time, so maybe you don't have to with that shadow. No, not shadow, blush. I'm so used to reviewing eyeshadows on here that I just can't get out of that. Ooh, but fancy pants is very, very pretty as well. But also kind of like what I was saying, these do look very, very similar. The brush is completely cleaned. I rubbed it on a white piece of cloth and nothing showed up. So I know there wasn't any pigment on the brush that's like mixing with everything. They're just very, very close in color. For me, maybe a little bit too close. Although this does seem like one of those palettes where you could literally just mix everything and it would make a beautiful blush. Here we have both of them. Very subtle, kind of, but still very pretty and the quality does seem to be there. Clean this little hoe off again. And let's go in with the last two, starting with a pretty posh. And with this, I'm actually not gonna tap it off. I just wanna see how pigmented we can get. So let's start right there. Okay, see? That is not super duper pigmented, although it is very close to my actual skin color, so maybe that's why we're not seeing it. Let me add a little bit more. Once again, not tapping it off. Um, now I can kind of see it. I think it has kind of like a yellowy undertone, and so it almost looks like I combined it with the orange. I don't know. I really like that. It is just a bit too light for me right now. Then lastly for this palette, let's go in with some Aftermath, which this I am not gonna tap off either. Hopefully I don't fuck this up. Let's see. Okay, so with the deeper shades, you might want to tap off a little bit, but also I don't really know that you need to. Like this is not overkill for me. But like I've said a million times on this channel, I always fucking love an 80s moment where you just drag it up your temples and your whole face is basically blush. If we can make big, bold, beautiful, bushy eyebrows a thing again, we can totally make over-exaggerated blush a thing again. But once again, both of these are very, very pretty. Not too pigmented. It's just like the perfect in-between. How I've been going into these blushes is how I go into pretty much every blush. So I wouldn't necessarily say that these are any more pigmented than any other blush palette. At least not enough to like make the pigmentation be a bragging point because in my opinion, it's not. Like are they saturated and vibrant? Yes. But I definitely have way cheaper palettes that are way more pigmented. But again, a pigmentation with a blush isn't always the best thing. So let's go on with the next palette. Okay, to begin, let's start with Fantasy. Oh my gosh, this is a color that I never ever use, probably never would use. I think way back when I referred to this color as being like a clown shade and people got so offended. Since then I've realized how beautiful it is, but it just makes me look like a clown when I wear it. So we'll see what it does this time. And here we go. See, that one isn't super pigmented. It is way too light for me, obviously, but it just kind of like dusted away. Let me go in a little bit more. I didn't take anything off of the brush. We'll just pack this little mama on. There we go. That's a little bit better. I know this is definitely a shade for fairer skin, and so you don't need it to be too popping. But even that, oh, fuck, I'm dropping shit. I actually really like that, and I would totally wear it. This does not look like how my other shade that looks like that looks at all. I think the other ones have way more of like a purple undertone to them and so they blend out to be lavender-ish. But this does look really, really pretty. Yes, it is light, but I don't think it's too light. Like it's not so light that it makes my face look ashy. I don't think. I don't know. But I do really like it. Then let me flip my brush and we can go into French Kiss. And here we go. This one probably is too light for me. It's not even showing up. Let's do a second dip. Mmm. Mm -hmm. It's just too light for me. It's not doing anything. Okay, so this is about five dips. And I mean, it is going over a foundation. So there's something for it to stick to. It just isn't my color. But when it is built up, it does look very similar to the shade on the other side, which is kind of a repeating thing with these palettes. Like the shades aren't so different that when they blend out, they look different. But maybe on lighter skin than mine, they would look different. Foundation this bad beast up again. Cleaner brush. And let's dive into Living Lavish. This one probably is more of a shade that I would fuck with, but it would be beautiful on deep skin tones. 
Ooh, I like that color. Tap her right there. Oh, this is forceful and I love it. That is with one dip and I did not tap off my brush. I'm gonna take a second dip not tapping off my brush, which I know this will be overkill, but I do want you to be able to at least see the color. I think without any other makeup on, it does look like overkill, but when I do have a full face, this is probably about as hard as I would go in. But again, it plays marvelously with the foundation. It just looks very pretty. And on to Admirer. And I know that these say they're matte, but this one right here actually has some shimmer in it. I don't know if it's supposed to, but she definitely does. And here we go with the next shadow. No, it's a blush. Damn. Okay, that first application didn't really do much. The second one is starting to build up a little bit. Let's go in with a third little dippy dippy. And here we go. I like that color. Super subtle, but it just adds a little bit of a flush effect, which is exactly what the fuck blush is for. But this also looks exactly like how one dip of this blush looked. It is pretty much the exact same color. What you're seeing, the saturation is always turned way up, so it'll be a little bit more dramatic, but in person, same color. But then again, I do like that you have the option to go deeper and heavier and darker with this one. But then do we really need this lighter one if you can dip into this and just really blend it around and get the same color? That's what I'm saying, where I just wish things were a little bit different in these. And then with a clean brush, let's dip into the last two. I think I actually am gonna do a little bit of a look. It's gonna be so simple, like barely even a look, but I do kind of want to try these with bronzer and contour. So let's tap into Dainty. That picks up very nicely. Let's tap it on the temple and bring that shiz down. That's very pretty. I think though this palette definitely isn't for me. I think I prefer the other palette just color wise. Not that I wouldn't ever use this, but I think the only colors that I might use is like this one, maybe that one randomly. But again, I could totally see this working for a lot of people. Let me go in with, I think this is the third or fourth dip. Damn, she is pretty. Wow, that last one has a lot of pigment. I'm gonna tap some of it off. And here we are. Okay, so these two kind of are a little bit different. This one seems to have a more yellowy undertone. This one has kind of like a bluish undertone, but the difference is so freaking minuscule. I've said it a thousand times and I will say it a fucking again. It's not that these are bad quality. I just wish this was a broader shade range because honestly, you really only have like three different shades in here. Like you could go in super sparingly with this color and I am positive that it would probably blend out to be something like that color. Color. And yeah, you totally could build this up to be that actual color, but when you can get this color out of this color, like why bother having this color? But that's just first impression thoughts. I still think a lot of people would love this. All right, so let me wipe this off and let's dive into a look. I actually really like the way this looked on my skin without a primer, so I'm just gonna dive right into this. I know it's a little bit too yellow for me, but that's okay. What the fuck else is new? <gasps> this might actually be a little bit too light for me. How about that? Thank you, summer sun coming through. And then a little bit of my, oh god, there's hair in my eye. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Hey, you know what? It's just gonna live there until I can braid it. Freaking squee squee, I'm going in with my trusty Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. This is weird. This burns. Why would this burn? I use this all the freaking time. Probably just my skin falling off. No biggie. Then under the eyes, I'm gonna set with some Jaclyn powder. I've been loving this palette so freaking much. I've used this almost every day that I've filmed something. There are a bunch of chunks in it. Okay, we're just gonna ignore that, I guess. But it does such a beautiful job at blurring my under eyes. Normally I don't like these kinds of products just because they make my under eyes look super cakey. And I guess with some products this has made my under eyes look cakey, but for the most part this plays well with almost everything. And then I do have a little bit of redness right around my nose, so I take some of the yellow and just set it there. We'll just let her chill for a second. It's time to do her crossword for the day. She can go swipe right on a couple people, have her morning coffee, and now she's set. For contour I'm gonna go in with my usual Catrice Sculpting Squad. <gasps> I found an angled brush. We can use this for the blush. For bronze hair, I'm gonna go into the Juvia's Place Bronzed Palette. This is another product that I love to tap on. I don't know if you're supposed to or not, but this shit always looks great when I do. But you know me, I'd never say no to a good face bang. Ooh, that bronzer may have been a little bit too yellow for me though. That's okay, we'll make it work. Then I did put concealer on my eyes, so I'm just gonna give that another little tap. I was not lying, I told you this look would be quick and dirty. It is gonna be just that. I'm gonna dive into my Lethal Cosmetics Palette, into this orangey shade right here with a big ass fluffy brush. And I'm literally taking that all over the eye and up the crease line. Just like so. Very pretty. Then I'm also gonna dip into Boudoir in the blush palette. And I'm just gonna kind of tap that right underneath what I just laid down. Ooh, that makes a really pretty eyeshadow. I did pick up an actual ass ton, but even so, it is marvelous. Titties are swinging, baby. And a little bit more Boudoir onto the lower lash. I'm probably gonna drag this into my blush. I always love like a monochromatic eye and blush moment. And then I'm gonna also mix a little bit of Tea Room with Ever 
after. And I'm gonna smoke that out on the lower lash as well. I feel like this look is already way more than the average person would do, but for me, this is great. Much more simplified than normal. Then back into this lethal palette, I'm gonna dive into this kind of purpley pink shimmer, and I'm just gonna place it right on the inner corner about halfway in. Very nice. And then I'm gonna top that off with some Pop Lux Double Life. I'm going to attempt to conquer my brows with the Uma Butete Baby Hair Brow. We'll give the brow a little bit of a highlight with the, what the fuck is this? Brow Lights by, I have no idea, but it's a duo brow highlighter. And before I put on my lashes and all that cheesy jazz, let's go ahead and connect the blush. I think I kind of want to dip into like these three. I'm gonna tap some of that off because she picked up a lot. And we'll start right up there and kind of connect the eyeshadow right about there. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't have tapped that off. I do really like the way that those look together. Maybe I'm gonna also mix this pink with this deeper one. And tap that right there. I'm totally going for like an overkill moment so we can really see this. But also like for me, this isn't an overkill moment. This is just normal. Yes, I really like that. You know what? Why the fuck not? I'm gonna take a little bit down the nose. I normally wouldn't, but it just kind of looks cool. I love the harsh contrast between my under eye highlight and this blush. It's just so 80s. I love it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and highlight with a little bit more double life. Ooh, those fuck hard. Oh, my false lash is infested with glitter. Oh, I say infested because glitter is literally like cockroaches. You just can't fucking get rid of it. But also I'm kind of falling in love with glitter, so whatever. And here we are with our final look. I did actually have to jump off camera for about an hour and a half, so I've been wearing this blush for a little while. I mean, an hour and a half really isn't that much time, but I don't think it's faded. It looks very, very pretty on the skin. I love the way that it looks on the eyes. I just think it like melts into the skin so nicely. So does the quality seem to be there? I think for the most part, like it doesn't seem to be dusty at all. It's very vibrant, very beautiful in color. But do I think it's worth the price? Yeah. It's not like the quality is bad. Like quality wise, yes, I do think it's worth the price. I just wish the colors were different. So like if this color story speaks your name, if you know that you could get use out of each individual shade, then yeah, it is worth the price. For me, for that price, the shades are just too freaking similar to justify just a pie? What the fuck is a just a pie? I don't know, I'd still eat it. But for my taste, they're just too close in color to say yes, the price is totally worth it. If we took out the similarities in both these palettes and combined them both into one, I would gladly pay 45 or even $50. Because then at least we have a little bit more versatility. I feel like these could have gone a little bit farther. So I don't really think they're worth the price, but it's not because the quality is bad. It's just because I want a little bit more. Totally personal preference. Like if these speak to you, grab them. You probably won't be disappointed. Do I recommend them? Again, and if you think that you can work with this, if you think that this is a big enough shade range for you to work with, then yes. But I'm gonna be real, I do have a better selection from way cheaper palettes than this, and the quality is pretty much the same. So yeah, I don't know how helpful that is, but you can at least see how it looks on my skin. They're very pretty, and they are pretty much the same quality as everything else that they've launched, but I don't think these are my favorite things that they've launched. They're not bad, they're just not my cup of tea. But anyways, my loves, there you go. Thank you so much for being here. I love having you. And if you'd like to support me and my channel just a little bit more, please feel free to join us over on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash poplux. There you get videos a day early, you get Patreon-only content, plus best part, it is cheap, fun, and fancy just like me. And like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, is available at thepoplux.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below, let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at OfficialNady, and you can follow me online at thepoplux.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye! My bones start to